Hello and welcome back friends. Uh, this is Shuman Bhattacharji from Shomu's Biology. Every single year just before the CSI NET exam, I am here to provide you some important informations and new ideas and answers to your questions. Now for this previous six months, I have been asked many questions from a different point of time and I always want them to keep your questions to yourself. I am going to answer them just before the NET exam. And uh, here is the time to answer some of the important questions. One of the most important questions I received and actually I filled myself is to ask that why I am not improving my marks in CSI NET exam. Even though I am trying, even though I am looking for different books, I am preparing like I am investing most of my time. Earlier I was going for 2 hours a day but now I am going for 4-6 hours a day but still my marks are stuck into a region. How many times it happened to you that you, you go to the exam you prepare differently, you, prepare, you, you are putting yourself really hard there during preparation. But while going there, you are checking your score is somewhat between 80 to 90. And actually, if you, if you check overall, if you prepare at least moderately and well enough, you are going to end up in this 80 to 90 zone. This is called the dead zone uh, for the CSI net marks. Because you know earlier uh, while the GRF cutoff was 48% or 50% getting 100 will be enough but now based on the previous few cutoff marks you can see it's 130 uh, should be the target. So it's pretty much big compared to 80 or 90 but it may happen like most of the cases you stuck in 80 to 90 range. Now I, I must tell you one thing any of you if watching this video going to get this mark of 80 to 90 are a prime candidate to qualify CSI net exam. So it's not likely like you're not going to qualify. This is not your thing. Never think of that. You are in the role of getting the CSI net GRF fellowship. But there is a small difference, small, small blank sites, gaps that's present there. Not only in your in your knowledge, it's not about the there is a gap in your learning and, and knowledge. It's about applying the knowledge that you have. And in Shomu's biology, that's what we do. We try to fill that gap so that it's not about just reading and, and, and interpreting what you read and, and, and know that thing. But it's about applying that knowledge so that you can fill that gap and you can lift yourself up. The thing for that, you know, the biggest problem associated with not improving the marks, that means if you score consistently, let's say for last three years, you're appearing for net and you're going to get the net score from like almost like 70, 80, like 80, 90, 92, 93. Last three net exam you appeared, you got 90, 92, 93, something like that. So it's not improving, even though you're trying to improve. So what is the problem? The problem is, you know, this is a baseline at the end. It's not about the problem with your preparation. It's about how you interpret and analyze those questions during the exam. It's about one big thing and that is the negative marking and especially the negative marking in group C. Now based on this year's numerous uh, OMR sheet analyzing uh, analyzation, I, I, I realized one important fact that the biggest problem for those who stuck in 80, 90 this range is actually due to the negative marking. And I'm going to show you the proof. I have to sample uh, OMR sheet of uh, two of my students here in my hand. Uh, these are some good example uh, to show you why negative marking should be such a cancerous thing for CSI net exam. Because no, you know, you may think that well, negative marking what it is going to do. It's going to like if you do a negative marking in group B, it's going to debit like 0.5 half marks mu. And if you do the negative marking in group C, it's going to uh, like subtract one marks for each question. But actually in reality, it's not one marks or 0.5. If you make a negative marking in group B, it's minus 2.5. And if you do a negative marking in group C, it's minus 5. You know why? Because the way you answer, let's say you answer 10 questions. Okay, so here I'm going to explain why I'm telling you that it's not minus 1, it's minus 5. Check out here. Let's say you start with, let's say you answer 10 questions from group C. 10 questions in group C and each carries 4 marks. So you scored like 40. You answered total 40 marks question. That's what you know. Now let's say among this 10, 6 were wrong. 4 is right. So what will happen? Now if you think that it's failing in one question in group C is only minus 1. 
let's say your six questions are wrong so you'll get minus six that is an extra minus six that means six questions were wrong so each case questions carry four marks so ultimately giving you 24 marks debited as you make the answers wrong apart from that six extra marks will also be taken as a debit so from this total 40 marks 30 will be debited and you'll get only 10 so the question that you solve for 40 marks is ultimately giving you only 10 as you make six wrong answers so this as i told you this wrong answers in group c is a huge curse and to explain that i have this sample two mock test papers of two of my students in this last papers and these papers i am going to tell you a simple uh, story the story of two person let's say this is a person a and story of person b person a in this case in in real life example i am giving you person a gets the total marks uh, let's say we will write here total marks the person gets the total number attained and the, the total negative marking the total number answer total negative marking and total marks that person obtained now the thing is the total number of questions attended by the person a was 10 the total number of questions attempted by person b was only 8 both in group b and group c okay and here somehow this person a has a lot of negative marking and ultimately end up with the total marks of 3 answer 10 questions both in b and c get 3 so a lot of marks have been debited well, for person B, answered only 8 questions, attend only 8 questions and got 23.5. Can you imagine this huge amount of difference? Answering 8 questions is good if you score 23.5 rather than answering 10, 12, 15 questions and answering and getting 3, 5, 6. That means that person A has more negative ratio or negative uh, numbers and negative marking compared to person B that means most of the questions person B attended was correct so figure out this on your own and actually whatever other things I saw this thing I think the most important force that prevent you to score more in the net exam work on this part you should not do a negative marking in group C even though it's little allowed in group B, but not at all in group C. If you can't answer it, don't go for it. If you don't know it for confident, don't go for it. But you will see the marks to be improved if you only stick to the right answers, not the negative one. Just be there. Don't guess from the beginning. If you are a newcomer and you are just appearing for first time or stuff, don't go and attend every single question. Check your actual potential and sometimes you'll find you'll go above that 90, above you'll get 100, 110, some score like that. It will immensely boost your confidence for the next time of the net exam. So this is one of the most important way and one most important region to work to improve. Now you may ask, how can we confidently answer the question? Right? So there are two things here. You are scoring, let's say you are scoring for, uh, you are, as I told you, you are stuck in 80 to 90 range. That means you are scoring every year like 110 to 120 marks at least. Or someone even more than that, 130 marks you are scoring every time. Even you can check it uh, based on the question paper, how many marks you have answered. So you are answering 130 marks, 140 marks, 150 marks. You are getting 90, 92, 85, something like that. That means... That means you are getting 92. That means you have answered enough number of questions correctly. But you are also answering some unnecessary questions. So one thing you can do, not even, even uh, preparing or not even doing any preparation change, that exclude that unnecessary questions that you are answering. All of us what we do at the end of the exam, we check for, like we first we answer only the most confident questions. Then at the end of the exam, we thought like, let's answer it. Like we have a tie between two options. Let's answer it. 
because it's at the end and we have to fill lot of blank regions in OMR. This is another big myth. You don't need to do that. I show you an example. Answering 8 questions can give you 30 marks. But answering 10 questions sometimes give you minus or less than 5 marks. So don't go for that myth that you need to fill that OMR completely. That's a myth. Don't go with that. You need to answer correctly. Even though small, but you should answer them correctly. So in those cases, try to exclude all those unnecessary questions that you are answering. Now the question is, how can we know unnecessary questions? Any questions that you have a huge doubt, avoid them. Even, let's say you answer, let's say almost in group C, 25 questions, you answer 15 questions confidently. And you have 4 more questions that you have doubt in 2 options. And you, are, you answered ample amount of questions in group B and A. So in that situations, I think if it's like first few levels of your net preparation, like first year or second time of the next net preparation, you should exclude that four questions. Don't attend those questions. Don't answer them. So that you will get, you will see a good marks. Because answering those four questions may result in three of them wrong. Even four of them wrong going to give you a huge 20 minus from the actual score. So again, you end up with 90. But if you can't answer, if you don't answer that, that four questions, you'll almost get like four marks more uh, to the actual level of answer that we there. So it's going to improve uh, your economy rate based on the total number of questions answered and total marks obtained from it. Try to go with that. This is one thing. This is one way you can improve it. Uh, not implying any of the other stuff or not changing the way you prepare for the exam. Now the second thing, obviously you have to get a high score and answer all the questions. So for the second part, what you need to do, you need to work really hard. And work hard means uh, you need to answer a lot of questions. That's it. That is what you need to do in the exam. You need to answer questions, right? You don't need to read the book. And what you do all the six month or one year of preparation, you just read the book. That is the biggest mistake and I repeated it quite a time in my different videos. You need to solve MCQ questions every time. Even in sometimes I think that don't go and read the book. Start with MCQ book. Start with MCQ questions and go with the questions. Start answering the question from the beginning. If you have a problem with any part of the question, then refer to the book. Read that part from the book. Write it down in your notebook. Then come back again. Start solving the MCQs. So it will be called as MCQ guided preparation. And believe me, whether you can do it or not, but actually this MCQ guided preparation is one of the most important way that can give you immense confidence over answering MCQ questions in actual CSI net exams. Be prepared with that. And actually I told all my students do to one, one thing to do and none of them actually can maintain it uh, in both the case. And that's so simple. I told them that you need to answer 10 MCQ questions every single day for one year. 10 MCQ question every single day, one year and all the MCQ question that we'll answer will be from the last 10 years of CSI net papers. I don't believe in all those model papers and stuff. Go for the last 10 years paper. Start reading from there. Start answering for there. For continue for one year, 10 MCQ every single day, you will see the difference in your mark statement for sure. That's a guarantee. But not all of them, not none of them actually have achieved that. That's a bet I have had uh, with my students earlier. But they failed to obtain the same thing again and again. You need to do that. Otherwise, you can't improve. It's not about reading it again and again. It's about improvising the stuff. It's about thinking. It's about creating the long-term memory. And the only way it's going to be created is answering MCQ questions. And that's what you need to do. Remember that these are two very, very important ways. But very tough for you to maintain throughout the time of preparation. If you do that, you will surely see that the, the, the 80 to 90 range is broken down and will go to 100 and above 100 and it's going to boost your marks and that's going to be for sure. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and share this video. And another information for you that for every single year we conduct this online as well as offline batch. Here also we, we started the admission process of online and offline students for the upcoming June 2017 CSI NET uh, batch. Uh, so classroom coaching batch will be conducted in Kolkata, but we take students from any place from India. They can stay in Kolkata and, and appear for it. And for the online, you can go for any place from any time. The all details are provided in my website. In the home page of the website, you can go, you can click the link, you'll get the details. And as well as the link is provided here in the in the description box, as well as in the card over on the top, as well as in this 
video many a times you'll see the description on the on the right hand side so you can click on this link and be redirected to the website you'll see the details thank you